Uh, so first of all, Mike, I've not prepared an intro. Please <laughs> introduce yourself to us and tell us a little bit about yourself and what do you do? So Mike, uh, I'm a dad to be. Uh, I'm originally from the States, uh, but I've been living abroad for about 12 years uh, from uh, places like China, Japan, Turkey. Uh, and now recently, uh, I'm in Paris, France. That's where I'm currently living. And I used to work for companies, but uh, and five years ago, I started my own thing uh, with web design. It's called Webadoo. And basically, uh, we help startups and people that don't have staff uh, to either build something uh, or design something. We help them with that. Or for these new startups, or if they have a new idea that they want to chase and they're looking for a small team, uh, that's where we help them out. Like, as I describe myself as a front end developer, do you have a job title? Uh, so people, no, I, I don't. And I actually experiment with this on LinkedIn. So uh, people actually come to me with saying, Mike, I want to build something. Uh, so, you know, for the web. And that would kind of come off as, uh, OK, you're looking for a web developer. Uh, I guess what I've seen is when I was first started out, um, I was more, people would recognize me as a web a web developer, uh, I'm sorry, a web designer and uh, a WordPress uh, developer. So that's kind of how what happened to me. Now um, I'm more as a, it's, it's not like a creative di director, but if I read their job description, what they do uh, mm -hmm. in terms of trying to figure out how to do something unique uh, for a company and how it can fit with their business needs. That's sort of what I do and, and what people ask me uh, to get get involved with. So I started, I'm more recently thinking to kind of call myself like a creative lead, um, mm. if anything. So if people ask like, what's my job title? I'd probably, yeah, I think creative lead for online, for the online space. That's kind of where I'm going. So it's not a, <laughs> definitely wouldn't be in a, it's not a normal job title, but and in the end, or what I'm kind of hired to do is just help companies do something new uh, or different online. So, mm. yeah. yeah, I think it's um, this whole job title thing. It's always changing as well. Yeah, uh, and like the take the designer for example. Like pretty soon, it's going to be hard to be just a designer that doesn't touch any code um, mm. because uh, you know it's just it's so much it's so ingrained in our life at the moment. So. I think it's like, uh, you know, we have these job titles, they were listed before a lot of this stuff even existed, like, uh, you know, doing things for the internet. Um, so I think job titles, they'll start changing a little bit and the expectations of what someone's capable of doing, um, you know. How did you get clients that were willing to pay? Did they approach you or did you approach them? I found people that were requesting for a website. Um, you know, sometimes on Facebook groups or something, your local, uh, so there was, um, for us, there. I was living in Amsterdam when I started. They had this local entrepreneur uh, network and went there. Uh, so offline, I would go to these meetings and meet some people. Online, occasionally someone would say, I'm looking for a web designer. Can anyone help me? And then so I kind of just reached out to them. And the way that uh, in terms of selling um, to these people, price is always an issue. And it's hard to charge, I think, what... Uh, uh, what you know you read on blogs and stuff what you should be charging um, I just really wanted to get some experience and see if I could get some first clients and build a portfolio uh, so yeah my mission was to connect with these people any way possible and get as personal uh, so if I had the chance to meet them in person I would go take them out for coffee uh, or if we were over um, if we couldn't meet in person I would try to have a face-to-face -face conversation uh, like this so people that are willing to work with a beginning web designer, uh, they're going to be price conscious. Like they cannot pay a lot of money for what it is that you want. And what that means is that uh, they also can't have surprises. They really want to see like, okay, this is the product that I'm going to get. And I think mm -hmm. this is why you see a lot of uh, people that instead of hiring a designer, they'll try to do it themselves by buying a template. So as I would say to them, uh, okay, Here's some, here's some template options that we can work with. Tell me what you like of these. And in terms of price and stuff, like, you know, I have my limits, uh, so I can't, 
you know, for example, I say I would like to charge 500, uh, 500 euros or 1500 because I think it's going to take this amount of time. And in terms of edits, uh, I'm only going to allow this. And I tried to do that. And at the beginning, I ended up doing a lot, spending a lot more time uh, than I needed. But I felt like just going into this sort of, I'm more or less going to have, this is the final package of what you're going to have. Uh, I found that help, very helpful. For anyone who's watching who is wanting to go the freelancer route and make their own websites for their own clients, what advice would you give them in terms of making good sites? Go as simple as possible and go in it with, the, with the idea that you um, that you're the expert and that you know more uh, than uh, the people that you're going to be serving. A lot of a lot of times, what I see or what happened at the beginning was that the client says, "I need this, this. I need six pages for my web page, for my website. One page for this. One page, uh, you know, about page, a service page, a contact page. I need my blogs. My blogs need to do." Uh, uh, what was it? I need a nice sidebar for an opt-in uh, where there's going to be an email. And I need that to be connected to my email newsletter. And like they have this whole picture. And the reality is, is you ask them, how much time you have for this thing that you're going to do? How much are you going to write? Are you going to write a newsletter once a week? And then there's complete silence when there's when you ask these kind of questions because they don't know. And they're actually overwhelming themselves. Uh, what I found is this, is that most uh, smaller companies have this vision because they read things uh, from on, from the internet, thinking that this is how you should run your business. And I would mm. I would suggest to challenge it. What I've seen is you make one a, a one page landing uh, website can be super powerful and can do exactly what uh, what a company would want would expect from a website uh, to do. And so simplify if whenever possible. I think that's a great way. Don't just clients will be thinking stuff because they read it. Challenge them and think uh, maybe propose uh, yeah different options. Yeah. I mean, so much is going on in my head there, Mike. Uh, just memories of situations in the past where mm -hmm. I've worked with clients and they're afraid of white space. They want to cram everything above the fold. Oh yeah. And they don't want to let the copy breathe and create this sense of uh, a journey, taking, yeah. taking the uh, visitor on a journey through the site to find out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've, I've had, yeah, I've had the same thing. It seems that uh, the older generations tend to have this idea, this is how websites, everything should be above the fold. You shouldn't have to scroll or That's something. That's right. Yeah, I, I find it funny. Um, yeah, what I've, because this kind of backfired on me with, uh, you know, just following orders and saying, okay, I'll do it just to make the client happy. Um, in the end, what makes a client happy is that they that their business because they they're not in the business of making web designs they're in the business to do whatever they're they're having so the website is their tool and basically what it as long as you're supporting that and you're giving good reasons why you think your actions are going to help support their business i think that's a big thing that uh, i think they will be happy or they'll be satisfied yeah so let me ask you this, uh, where do you stand on this then? Because like I've heard the, the phrase, good design is worth fighting for. Uh -huh. um, you're absolutely right. You need to explain why you're suggesting what you're suggesting. Uh -huh. But how far do you take it? If they're not taking you up on your suggestion, is it a case that, well, they're the one paying the money. So, you know, at least I stood up for it. But, you know, it's your money at the end of the day. So it's your call. So I haven't had, yeah, I haven't had a um, like a full out sort of battle on this uh, right. where um, one one side won and the other lost. But for example, uh, designers will get into this. Uh, you design something, but the copy is terrible, mm. right? And so then the client will come to you saying, "My website isn't good because the design is bad." But is it the design or is it the story that you're trying to tell? Yeah. So I've, I've run into this a few times. And so uh, this is, so the way I combat it is this, is that 
and 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 normally when when I'm just starting my uh, meeting with people or or the relationship with the client, I tell them, look, I want us to be transparent and open about things mm -hmm. and honest. And there's going to be moments where you don't agree with some of my stuff, and I'm and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be thinking something else, and we're probably going to have sort of a clash. But I'm going to do my best to. My idea, you know, my goal is to help support your your goals with a website or whatever we're building, and let's just be open about that. Let's talk about this. And I found that so okay, so that's sort of what we kind of you know set that stage at the beginning. Yeah. And what I found is that during the relationships, when there are these moments of differences, it just helps. And yeah. in the end, uh, we find we find a way to make it work. Uh, I guess what you the next step would be okay. We'll measure your results. Uh, so it's actually something I'm thinking about now because I made a big change to uh, one of our clients' site where I'm thinking maybe I should figure out like you know what's the difference of people signing up that month before versus the month when we uh, made this change. But I think okay. being open and, and just talking with your clients is a big thing. Uh, in terms of uh, measuring, I was just talking about like. Uh, um, if it's like getting people to sign up to create an account, for example, like a yeah. split testing, split, yeah, a little bit. Oh, well, even more simple than that. So we we have this one website where uh, users log in. It's sort of like LinkedIn, but for science. And so you have mm -hmm. to create a user profile. Uh, so how many people did it before the change? And then now I'm implementing the change. And how many mm -hmm. are signing up uh, the month after? So I just want to compare that, and then that that might become useful uh, information for our next conversation. You know, a lot of people would say that that's when the real work of a, of a website becomes, yeah, uh, begins, sorry, once it's actually online, then you're not finished, your job's not over. You then want to find out, okay, how are people using the site? We installed this thing, I think it's called Something Egg, and it gives you heat maps of how people are actually interacting with the site to let you know how it can be improved. Um, and how do your clients feel about that? They love it. Right? <laughs> they lo like, one of the things I've found that really turns clients on, like if you really want to um, send a client to sleep, just start talking about PHP and <laughs> HTTP2 and all that kind of stuff. But once you start talking about SEO, uh, Google, um, that kind of thing, they go wild. OK. I'll tell you what, what my clients like. Take screenshots of their competitors and just show them what you're doing versus them. Uh, show them how we're trying to be a little bit different. Yeah. S spread that message a little bit. Because then they're like, because that's, that's touching their business. So it's like, oh, OK. I don't know. That's it's, it's the language that they speak. They can see. I, they know their competitors. Exactly. And now they see. Now they get a feel of how we're trying to do something a little different. So yeah, um, <laughs> I always have to. Yeah, when when my partner Vitor when he talks about code, I'm always like, all right, man, five minutes, <laughs> it's up. <man. laughs> let's let's change it. So Mike, how can people reach out to you and follow your journey online? Yeah, cool. So first off, I just want to say thanks to everyone and thanks to you, Mike, for letting me be on the show. Um, if uh, you want to get in touch, uh, my website is webbidoo.com. I'll send the link. Uh, because of you, I'm getting inspired to create my own uh, YouTube channel. And so uh, I'm hoping to have uh, some more videos out. Uh, I already have one, but there's nothing really there. I think I'm, this idea of sharing journeys, uh, talking more about uh, what goes in the, the the daily life of being uh, what it is we are, I think it's pretty neat, and I think it'll help for clients to see to get a sense of you know our characters, uh, who we are as people, and then they might want to work with us. Uh, so I think YouTube will be another one, and then uh, yeah, Instagram. We've started something. It'll probably die, but uh, it's um, the idea is that we want to show. My partner is a dad. I'm a dad to be. We wanted to show our lives, uh, sort of like what it's like working from home, being the dads that work from home. Mm. Yeah, so any dads or dads to be out there, you may resonate very strongly with that. I'll leave links to all of the uh, 
your YouTube and your Instagram in the video description. Thanks, Mike. I hope you got something from that, guys. And um, any questions, leave them below. And I'll catch you later. Cool. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.